in Florida, if there's a seven foot gator in a pond, we go swimming. In L.A., it was such a, a rarity that it became this, uh, you know, quite a show. We're a very small strip of L.A. city property, and in our midst is uh, Mikado Lake or Har Harbor Regional Park. We were told that there was an alligator sighting in Lake Machado, and this is a, a public park. The alligator uh, that we found out later was nicknamed Reggie, and that caused him, you know, an uproar instantly of, oh my God, there's an alligator in the lake. Reggie was an illegal pet who got a little too big and was tossed into the 50-acre lake, allegedly by a former LAPD officer. It had come right up to the shoreline, and it was actually swimming kind of back and forth. People were attempting to even then catch it so they were throwing tortillas in the water and chicken and there were just a few um, animal control officers there and rec and parks people and they had their little nooses but I don't think they really quite knew what to do. And for me it was the issue of public safety and I didn't know if this alligator was sick or injured or hungry and I didn't, didn't want to take that chance. In Harbor City there is a park Crazy old man Murray McGee took his gator for a walk in the dark. He had it by the leash, but this gator began to shake. It tore off its collar and it headed out for the lake. He said, Nunca me on conturon. This is all I heard him say. Nunca me on conturon. Think that he's still there. Today, nunca me on conturon. This gate has got to town its knees. Nunca me on conturon. You'll never catch me. You know, first thing we realized was we needed to catch this alligator. Alligators in Florida is no big deal. Uh, alligators in Louisiana is no big deal, but apparently an alligator in Los Angeles made the evening news. So we actually um, were contacted by um, Jay Young uh, from Colorado who said he was a experienced gator wrangler. He showed up with a, a leather cowboy hat, a leather vest, and he actually had a, a necklace made out of uh, alligator teeth. I don't know who goes into that line of work, but it can't be too many people. <laughs> so I figured this guy had credentials. Nice guy. Nobody knew too much about him. I don't think he ever even saw it. A couple weeks after that, Gatorland and Tim Williams decided they'd heard about it, and uh, they were um, touting themselves as the real gator wranglers. They had caught hundreds of gators. The first thing that was kind of interesting with Reggie was uh, we had talked, I, I talked to some of the parks and rec people and stuff, and the impression I had of the lake was grossly different than what I saw, what we saw when we got out there. It was a much larger lake. We didn't catch him. There ain't no bones about him. It's more difficult to catch than anybody suspected. We've worked very hard at trying, and he just, he beat us. He's a good gator. <laughs> the Los Angeles Times was actually interviewing a lot of people who were homeless and had been displaced from New Orleans, and they came across T-Bone Quinn. He kind of upset the apple cart. And he then said, you know, I'm so grateful to Los Angeles for taking me in. I'm so grateful for shelter. Uh, I lost everything back in Louisiana. I have been known in my day to wrestle a few gators. And then they find out he doesn't even have insurance. We have plenty of insurance and stuff. Then they find out he's wanted me back. To, he gets extradited back to what, Georgia or Louisiana and put in jail. He was a felon. When we were first called in, there had already been several attempts by different amateur groups to try to catch Reggie, and he was quite frightened. The strategy we were hoping to do was be able to get close enough to him that we could put either a come along over his neck or, or catch him in a net, because the only time we saw him was one time at night, and, and we couldn't get anywhere near him. 
crocodilians in one form or another have been around since before the dinosaurs. Because they've persisted for so long, you've got to appreciate, you know, the design features of them must work. They have not just a regular eyelid that closes top to bottom, but another one that moves side to side. See that one? And that works like goggles. Obviously, their teeth are well designed for capturing prey, and they have massive uh, jaw muscles. I'm not surprised that it's had no trouble in evading people that have been trying to capture it. We're talking about a huge area and a fairly small animal. An animal that's perfectly designed for living in water, staying underwater, staying out of sight. So he's got a big playground, uh, and he's smart, and he's got an abundant food supply. So it just depends on whether Reggie wants to become visible or not. I mean, they're, they're pretty close to trying to catch the Loch Ness Monster. We adopted Reggie as an honorary resident of Harbor City, um, thinking that he gave us the most publicity, that he put us on the map. Kind of brought Harbor City closer together. From uh, early morning until